Hello, my name is uh, Marty Kaplan. I'm the head of innovation at Amber Studio. We are a game development agency that does worldwide development for customers uh, all around the world. Lots of different types of games from PC console to mobile to uh, even more exotic things like blockchain and uh, AI, uh, AI and VR, MR, XR. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Jenny, our generative art platform. This is us taking a look at how to use and demo uh, our, uh, our ability to take AI models and include them into traditional art pipelines for games. Um, and so our goal here is to create a client server tool, generates an infinite usable 3D game asset uh, via modular pipelines of AI models. So I'm gonna show you a little video of uh, what we have so far. Uh, we have a little front end in, in uh, Unity and uh, we're able to upload images to a server side, create a um, sort of training model as part of the generator and uh, then input a bunch of text to, to allow um, a set of information to come out. And so here we created a style and now we're gonna to move to the 3D phase. Um, so we took a bunch of 2D information, uploaded it, created a diffusion style, and now we're describing uh, a 3D version of this, this artwork. And so we generated a 3D model. Um, now, how does this magic genie work? Uh, well, we have a lot of stuff going on under the hood here. Um, we were able to uh, essentially create a Unity front end uh, and then use a Google uh, Google Cloud backend um, connecting to lots of different um, sort of sets of the pipeline to do uh, sort of an API that is uh, around getting the models done, uh, training the style, uh, generating uh, either the 2D and or 3D, uh, and then doing a mesh generation. So we have a lot of different stuff going on, as I mentioned. Uh, it's very interesting in that we are using lots of new technologies here um, from uh, you know sort of the the well-known but still pretty recent 2d uh, generation uh, of uh, uh, game assets uh, where we're taking a diffusion based model uh, using uh, the, the the text to generate stuff that's inspired uh, by that and then combining that with custom made uh, concept art that we've all we've done all internally um, because one thing that's important with this whole system is that we make sure that we have one that does not use any external references and so you know we ensure that whatever's generated here is 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 a completely original and so that that model takes a look at the uh, the training set of styles that we have and then we're able to generate 3d from that by uh, with a couple of techniques one is a, a nerf mesh generator and with a DM TET model, and then we have some other models because of the modularity of the system, we're able to sort of plug in brand new uh, bleeding edge tech uh, into into it as as it's discovered and and starts to become useful. Uh, and so I'll, I can run through just a little bit of what we've done on our roadmap so far. So um, you know, setting up kind of a standard uh, client server backend uh, and UI, we've you know know how to do that from making games, and so our our skills were directly transferable to doing that. Um, we've trained and integrate, integrated on the server side a lot of different models with an architecture for more or to swap them out. It's all modular. Uh, so basically taking the ability to use a pre-trained AM model to uh, you know, use the neural radiance fields uh, to generate a 3D point cloud, uh, getting that hooked up with making a texture for it, and then generating a, you know, a 3D mesh that uh, is visible in the client and exportable um, as lots of different uh, file formats. Um, and so now once we have sort of this basic um, version stood up, we are able to go into testing and deployment and we're doing a lot of things to improve this now. And uh, one, you know, everything from just doing UX UI improvements, listening to our artists and the, uh, the developers at Amber so that they can uh, you know, tell us what they want out of a tool like this and uh, improving the quality uh, overall of not only the, the 2D, but of course the 3D texture output. And I'll show you some things that are like the initial very beginnings, uh, but uh, it's very, very promising. And uh, while we're not at AAA quality yet, um, we anticipate being able to get there very soon. Uh, and so I'll show you some of that work.
So starting with original designs, so these are sort of uh, uh, you know, weapons that were done by our 3D artists at Amber. Um, and then we feed those 2D images of those the 3D objects that we made into a model. So we're able to generate more. Um, same deal with this, this is like a sort of a sci-fi look. This is, a, And then we take that sort of uh, 2D generative version and make it into a 3D mesh. Um, now there's a lot of interesting experimentation that we did here where we started with um, you know a single image pipeline. So we, we just had this one image go in and generated a mesh from it um, with, uh, with the Nerf uh, uh, stuff. And that took like 68 minutes on, the, on, our, <laughs> on our system. And then taking a look at the, you know, adding two images and then generating based on this, it starts to uh, have a multi-image pipeline and the, you know, the results are uh, different, like better in some ways, worse than others. It's all experimental, right? Um, and so we did that a lot. Like we figured out, okay, let's do different types. Uh, we're, we're, and we ended up, you know, kind of starting to understand how, how to get the best results out of the system, at least based on what we currently had. Then Gaussian splatting came into the picture. So all of those other uh, nerf based uh, techniques took a while. It took like 67 minutes to generate the 3D point cloud and texture. Gaussian splatting lets us do it a lot faster, like more than an ordinary magnitude faster, like nine minutes for this one. So it's kind of the same set of data, different math technique for the model to generate the stuff. And you know, you can see it's it doesn't look as good. It I mean, they don't look the both don't look great, but they're still um, we're still optimizing, and and it's still an interesting uh, result. And so you know, as this is an experiment, we're going to keep going keep optimizing, keep improving. Um, you can see here kind of what the texture map looks like for all you tech artists in the in the audience. Uh, you know, this is a, a, you know, an interesting exercise uh, all by itself in, in terms of using the diffusion model in conjunction with the 3D point cloud generation model, going back and forth, having a step-by-step -step process that makes um, a pipeline work to generate these 3D objects using uh, AI trained on original art. And uh, so you can see uh, in terms of our current cost per item, the Gaussian splatting wins by a mile. It's 11 cents to make that item, 78 cents to make the, uh, the, 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 the same item with a different technique. And we expect this kind of stuff to happen more and more and more. I mean, there will be, you know, I'm sure we'll get down to sub 000 cents an item with future techniques. Um, they're, they're already emerging from academia and lots of different places. Like it's very, very interesting time to see, um, you know, how, how things get optimized. It reminds me of the days of, uh, you know, uh, Dreamcast and uh, PS1 and all, you know, 3D models on those got, were pretty, pretty, fuck, uh, pretty, uh, pretty uh, interesting looking from a quality perspective. But as the generations of stuff moved on, it was really, really, really amazing to see it improve by leaps and bounds with each generation. So I feel this will be happening with the AI 3D generative stuff in, at you know warp speed compared to that multi-decade speed. This will be uh, in the in the in a matter of quarters, <laughs> much less years, much less decades. Uh, so more interesting generations. So again, we're starting with 2D images by our artists, our concept artists, and then they're using those to generate and uh, vary and make interesting looks. And then we are able to feed that uh, into once I select one into a 3D object, and uh, this this would you know again not be a final asset at this point, um, but we we can output this as either a starting point for further modeling and refinement or um, a, a a trial run that we're going to improve with uh, other other runs, new tech or um, new techniques that uh, will make the models just come out. Uh, much more interesting or look looking like we want them to a lot of different a lot of work to do here and I'll talk about that in a second um, and then we're doing more sort of guns here uh, you can see the the you know the style with a one with a one image pipeline you know lots lots of it's becoming something that we're able to just do over and over so key learnings uh, up to this point with the whole project uh, you know the the you know Jenny has allowed us to use stable diffusion with dream fusion and make you know a specific style with a low number of images um and at, at the beginning we needed like 200 
And we got it down to 15 to 30, which is a massive improvement and really good because if concept artists to even use the system needed to make 200 drawings of the same thing or similar things, well, that, that's very expensive. AAA teams can certainly afford that, but uh, we uh, usually work in a, uh, depending on your team, you may not be able to. And so uh, being able to use this tool is important to go in with few concept images uh, to do the initial training and then get good results, um, or at least uh, w work in progress results that helped with ideation uh, and maybe even uh, asset creation. Uh, and then, you know, detailed object generation, we were able to do that. These are detailed models that we can take right into any game engine as an FBX or an OBJ or any of those, any file format. And so, you know, we were, we achieved that goal. Uh, and we also sort of got a stretch goal of including a modular uh, uh, or making the modular na nature of this work, which uh, we are able to take the Nerf and DMT ET out and put Gaussian splatting in, still worked as part of the pipeline, which makes us able to, uh, we know that we can improve in, in the future as new techniques, new um, machine learning models come in. And uh, then we know that optimization is needed in a lot of different ways, but most especially the amount of time it takes. Uh, you know, right now, as I showed, it takes you know 45 to 70 minutes for the, the Nerf version of this to come out with a texture map and a, and a point cloud. Uh, that improved greatly with uh, using the um, with using the uh, Gaussian splatting, and so being able to uh, accommodate future improvements like that, and then work in uh, inside those modules to improve them is definitely something we're developing expertise with, and we will be uh, doing as we go, as as you always do, even in game development or any kind of software development. Uh, so next steps, you, we really want to make the model quality better. Right now, things look a little funky. So, you know, we want to make sure that we get to the point where these become, you know, AAA assets. Um, not even close right now, but that's okay. This is, this is just a uh, part, of the, part of the process as we figure it out. And um, so making sure that we're, uh, another piece is a lot of our clients work in AWS or in Azure or uh, you know, other other backend solutions, we want to make sure that we can uh, take the pipeline and implement it on any of those platforms. So we'll be experimenting with that. And then um, the big one for us is to find, to kind of close that gap in between uh, having a 3D model that's at whatever quality and having an in-game asset that works in your game as if you had bought it on a, an app store. Uh, or in in, a, in the um, Unreal Store or in the Unity Asset Store. So that means it's got to be, uh, we, we want to have an automated way to rig uh, uh, any, any things so that they can have physics and have animation and have uh, all kinds of different um, things from even, even just nodes for attachments so that, you know, a, a gun knows that, okay, here's the trigger, here's the Here's the butt of the gun, and you, you know, the, the, it can be sort of put into place um, really easily, um, depending on what the the team wants to do with it. So uh, we're we're working on that one. Um, that's that's going to be really interesting once that's done because it enables not only visual prototyping but gameplay prototyping super rapidly. Um, and so we're really excited for that, and uh, we'll be we'll be pursuing that ourselves um, and then offering it to our clients. Uh, once we know what we're doing. <laughs> uh, all right, that's the update for Jenny, our uh, AI 3D uh, generation software pipeline for games and other things. Uh, my name is Marty Kaplan. You can get in touch with me at this email, martykaplan at amberstudio.com if you're interested in talking more about AI uh, generative artwork in game development. And uh, uh, thank you so much again for uh, just paying taking a look at uh, this presentation and uh, we'll see you uh, uh, around the industry.